Welcome, everyone. You're watching In the Crosshairs, and I'm your host, Raquel Okiai, and my special guest today is Michael Marshall. Michael Marshall is a co-founder of the uh, website called Liberty First Foundation. That's L1F.org. Dot US. Dot US. <laughs> uh, so it's a great uh, website for information on gun rights, on, on guns in general, um, on the Second Amendment, um, educational and all, you know, proactive um, organization uh, to bring, you know, us firearm owners and supporters of this. And I'm a writer there too, so I gotta, I gotta <laughs> plug it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so thank you the show the second time you're come, you've come back, so I really appreciate it. And I asked you to come back today because what I wanted to talk about specifically um, are the bump stock laws and bans that are going around the country. Uh, so right now, um, just to give a tiny, tiny background before we get into the discussion, um, is that last year, or I'm sorry, this past year in April or February 2018, the president um, or the department to classify bump stock accessory um, uh, for, fi for a firearm uh, and to cl classify one. Um, because um, it sort of had a ripple effect. Um, well, actually it has been having in 2017 uh, because th there were 12 bump stock at the Las Vegas shooting in 2017. I understand people like delirious like they don't really know what bump stocks are but they just know that a killer used them and to be banned They're awful for the killer any device um so, so none of us gun enthusiasts support um unlawful use of firearms i just, I just want to be clear we don't unlawful use of firearm that is crime there's a statute criminal behavior involving a dangerous uh, so this bump stock um, which is a device and, and I'm going to give you a chance to talk um, it, a company that is like fire solutions and they're so uh, in production and they ceased production in April so they're like not even making it anymore. Um, California has it illegal since 1990. It was banned under the New York Safe Act in 2013 in New York, New Jersey. But the majority of the of the states, uh, they don't um, have any you know state regulations for bump stocks uh, like the. Um, however, this like the president coming and I don't know why the president does this, but maybe you can answer some questions. The political. What's going on politically? I, I really don't understand why the president would support something like this. I, I think it's it's severe gun control against law-abiding citizens who did nothing wrong. What do now, you think? Okay, um, the president's supporting it because the NRA is part of the issue with bump stocks. The NRA actually um, said that legislation against bump stocks needed to be included um, in the coming session um, shortly after the Vegas shooting. Excuse I me. saw that when I was doing my research too and I just now, I thought that might be a knee-jerk reaction by the NRA but they're still holding to that position at this stage of the game? Yes they are um, and honestly I think the biggest reason why the NRA jumped on that bandwagon was to draw attention away from AR-15s and AR-10s because there were a lot of AR-15s and AR-10s that were at the scene as well. So the NRA, in an effort to draw attention away from those firearms, focused on bump stocks as being the cause for the mass casualties that were observed at Vegas. Now, one of the things that I want to make note of is no other attack other than the Mandalay Bay attack in Vegas has ever used bump stocks. Okay, so it is a knee-jerk reaction. It's a knee-jerk reaction all across this country. Now, there are NRA people that support that type of um, legislation. Um, 
some very pro-gun people that support that type of legislation because they are thinking that, well, if we give them bump stocks, then we can bargain to keep something else that is more critical to the Second Amendment. I personally do not prescribe to that. No! <laughs> Nay! Nay! Exactly. <laughs> because they're going to take bump stocks and they're going to go push it a step further and say, okay, in order to for you to keep this part of the Second Amendment, you need to give us something. And every time it comes up, that's exactly what ends up happening is every time we try to protect something about the second amendment, the gun grabbers always come back and say, you have to give us something. And honestly, no, we don't. We have to, the second amendment doesn't classify what is, is weapons. Okay. It doesn't classify what weapons are protected and what weapons aren't protected. It does not state that only muskets are protected under the second. No, it doesn't say any of that. It says the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, period. It doesn't segregate them. It doesn't do anything else. Now, the fact that we are trying to, we're not trying to, but the fact that they're trying to ban bump stocks is just a further encroachment upon our Second Amendment rights. Okay, bump stocks are a, an accessory. Uh, to me, they're a gimmick. They ruin the accuracy of the rifle um, when, you're, when they're in use. You have a bump stock on a rifle, and all it is is a gimmick. Um, you have no accuracy. You have... It just gives you the ability to shoot a bunch of rounds down range. Now, yeah, and how, I, I, when I talk to some people who are, you know, um, who've done it, who've used uh, them before, they say that the accuracy, the lack of accuracy, um, it doesn't make it, you know, very useful, uh, the bump stocks. Um, but my, and that uh, it's still, it's still um, one trigger, one pull, you know, one pull, one round. Um, that doesn't change in it using the bump stock. What changes is that the device allows for the finger to stay still and the, and the stock gets, allows, allows it to trigger your finger. Right. And you're kind of like using the way I saw it, and I haven't used it before myself. Uh, but the way I saw it, it seems like you have to use two hands, like it's kind of uncomfortable. And, you know, if, if people don't want to use those devices, that's fine with them. But it's, it's not something that because somebody wants to use, has a preference for trying it out, you know, wanting to see the bump stock, see, see if it actually works, um, you know, at, at a range, at a, at, a, at a legal place to shoot firearms, you know, whatever it is, that there's no correlation between using that bump stock and mass murders. No, there isn't. None. None. All right. So the idea that creating these laws are going to save lives, it, it, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a non sequitur. It, it, it doesn't make any sense uh, no, because there is no evidence or data to back that up. And in fact, what we see is, for instance, in, in, in the city of Chicago, um, when they had uh, banned firearms, um, when they had banned handguns, uh, which was overturned. Uh, but um, in the city of Chicago, what happens is the crime rate, uh, the crime rates go up because the, the innocent the people, you know, who live in, the, in, the, in these neighborhoods with high crime rates as it is, now they're just sitting ducks to protect themselves. So they get robbed and there's home, a lot of home burglaries. You know, there's a lot of problems going on when you're, not, when, you, when you're not able to defend yourself. You know, just personally, you know, putting aside the Second Amendment for a second, you know, just personally, um, it's uh, and this is something that uh, is written in the in our founding um, documents, you know, uh, previous or for developing the Second Amendment, um, and that's that it's a, the Second uh, the Bill of Rights they they confirm they 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 just kind of um, confirm that these rights exist. They don't make up the rights. That you know these rights, particularly the first and the second, you know these rights you know, exist. The freedom of speech is freedom. We want to be a free country. 
we have to pay attention uh, to the restrictions on our freedom because it's, it's um, incremental. They just keep going after our freedom. So today it's bump stocks. What's it going to be tomorrow? Well, exactly. Okay. Um, rights are something that you are born with. They are not something that somebody granted you. Um, if it is granted, then it is a privilege. Okay. And for us to classify our inalienable rights of being able to protect ourselves, of freedom of speech, of various other things, Okay, to classify them as privileges as something that was granted by the Constitution or by any legislative body is pretty much ridiculous. Okay, I have the right to freedom of speech because I am able to speak. It's not something that was granted to me. It was something that I was born with. It's something that is part of my life. It is not something that was given to me by somebody else. The same applies with our right to self-protection, which is what is protected under the Second Amendment. Our right to self-protection does not depend upon the Constitution. The Constitution protects our right to self-protection, but our right to self-protection is not dependent upon on the Constitution. Now, the fact that we have to use firearms nowadays in order to be able to protect ourselves is because through the course of human history, every stage of it, weapon systems have gotten more and more advanced. We started off, we had our hands, our fists, our feet in order to protect ourselves, okay? Then we evolved into rocks, throwing rocks. And then we evolved into having pointy sticks and then we evolved into swords. And then once gunpowder was invented, then we started getting firearms. Okay, so all throughout history, our the ability to be able to protect ourselves has needed to evolve along with these new weapon systems that have been developed. Now, Definitely, and that's, uh, you know, human ingenuity. So you're not gonna, you know, we, we make cars, we make cars. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Feels they progress in time, uh, so you, no one's no one's trying to buy you know a 1950s Ford no. right now. Yeah, plenty of uh, new, and, and that's just you know the reality of you know history. Uh, there's always going to be that production. Uh, so somehow for you know nothing change it doesn't that doesn't change the Second Amendment, which is obsolete. You know, as you said, I'm the devices for the self-defense or, or defense in any in any way uh, obviously they're going to reach a point of sophistication you know and it's going to get even greater you know so it doesn't it doesn't stop here so it doesn't the meaning or you know the um the intent of the second amendment doesn't change by the instrument itself no <laughs> advances in military weaponry nowadays um they are getting bullets that are actually able to be um, or actually they're working on programs where they have what's classified as smart bullets. Bullets that can actually be programmed to track down a specific target. We've got drone yeah, technologies. Imagine. Right, right, and We've better. Got, yeah. um, all this other technologies. I mean, they're developing rail guns. They're developing guns that don't even require gunpowder to operate and be highly lethal. Yeah. Okay. Um, so where do we draw the line as to what is allowable under the Second Amendment and what's not? Well, again, I go back to the Second Amendment does not classify what is an arm. Okay. What is a weapon that is protected by the Second Amendment? It simply states the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, okay? And it's kept that simple on purpose because the founding fathers knew, they knew their history. They knew that weapon systems evolve. They knew that weapon systems become more advanced. They wanted to give the people the means to counteract a tyrannical government. 
so every time they try to add in a, another infringement onto our Second Amendment rights, whether it be through the ban of that came from the NFA, whether it be from the ban that came through the 1986 um, weapons um, gun control laws, or whatever, it right. violates the Second Amendment. It but it takes away from our ability to be able to act, to rise up against a tyrannical government, to rise up against a tyrant. And what's really ironic and what's really funny is we have, as you said, nonpartisans that are pushing for this bump stock ban, which is another infringement, okay? A lot of these infringements are coming from the left or progressives. What is really funny is they all claim that Trump, President Trump, is a tyrant. But yet, they're only wanting guns in the hands of government. Where does that make sense? It doesn't make sense at all. I want to ask you something. So some, some people, kind of devil's advocates, some people say that, uh, you know, the government, the, the, the uh, warfare power, uh, an individual um, with tanks or, you know, it, it's just like impossible to defeat, say, the people versus the government. Um, and if, if another civil war, for instance, that it would just be completely impossible. What would be your argument against that, you know, what would be, what would you say? Why are we still in Afghanistan, what, 17 years later, 18 years later, fighting a group of people that have far inferior weapons platforms and weapon systems than what the United States military does. But yet we are still in Afghanistan. Look at the Iraqi war, same, same thing, same, um, same outcomes. Okay. We're there a, an extremely long period of time. Uh, look yeah. at the Vietnam war. Okay. Again, we're fighting a group of people that were far inferior militarily wise than what the United States military was. But yet we had to withdraw from Vietnam because we could not achieve a clear victory in Vietnam. Okay. Uh, look at Korea. Again, another situation where we had a far superior military, military force in Korea, but we had some major issues in Korea fighting against, right. fighting against North Koreans. Uh, look at World War II, okay, and the, at the French Resistance and how well they did um, working against the Germans. The Germans were very far superior, okay? Um, literally walked through France in a matter of days, taking over France. But they had such a high attrition rate from the French Resistance that it was causing them a lot of issues. And French Resistance was actually key to us being able to be successful with D-Day. Okay. Also right. so, you're saying, so you're saying in history, you know, uh, the, um, the underdog, I'll call us the underdog uh, or others, uh, the underdog can be successful, you know, despite the um, inability, not having the same type of arms that your opponent would have. I, you know, it's also, you can go back, to, you know, David and Goliath. Well, exactly. You can go back to David and Goliath. You can go yeah. back to how our country was founded. How far superior was British military versus the Patriots that fought in the Revolutionary War? Right. Yeah. And, and even the, you know, the Civil War itself, the bloodiest war in our history, far surpassing any of the other wars so 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 we you know americans you know fought to the death um i mean in the civil war it's a brutal mm -hmm. you know it's a brutal war um as you know um so i i wanted to turn it right back into the bump stocks and the and the idea that once we let 
populace, you know, whether they're doing it as a collective force because they want to take away our guns, whether they're doing it because they're just ignorant on the facts and the details, um, it doesn't matter. Uh, the reality is that we, as Americans, uh, we, we support freedom. People all around the world want to come to America because we're a free country. And, and the meat of it, the teeth of it, is that the Second Amendment gives us that freedom. And, and that's not, you know, me necessarily saying it. It's the founding fathers that said it. And it really does go back to this, this fighting the tyrannical government. Because in history, we know that the first thing that despotic governments do is, is attempt to disarm the people. Uh, they know they have to disarm the people because it would be overwhelming. You know, some of the colonists or some of the, the, the first states, the first colonies, uh, they had, you know, local municipalities, uh, local laws uh, to say that you had to carry uh, or that you had to be, be armed, um, that you had to be able to protect yourself. Or it wouldn't be uncommon to call out for, you know, sheriffs uh, to deputize, deputize in, uh, average citizens in order for them to be, uh, to, to, to protect us or to protect people, you know, in emergencies and other, in other ways. Uh, that that self protection is so important, but this is the this is the idea. The bigger government, the tyrannical government, they want your arms. Um, whether they think they can defeat you or not, they cannot. They cannot defeat you with your arms because of the totality of amount of people in the country. So you have to think about it in numbers. In numbers, uh, we can defeat you know a tyrannical government. Other country, other people have done it. Um, and, uh, and if we take away the arms and it, it starts at the accessories, it starts at the, you know, just the mindless restrictions on certain groups of people, which I think are unconstitutional. Um, all of these things is just the start. It's the beginning of that confiscation. And that's what you and I are trying to avoid. Exactly. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's, it doesn't matter what it is. Okay. When they order these restrictions it is a means of literally putting us as number one inferior because they say that we aren't capable of handling the responsibility of being able to protect ourselves they they classify themselves as being the almighty and saying, well, we know what's best. We know that you aren't capable of making these decisions. We know that you are not capable of handling this responsibility. So we must do it for you. Um, yes, and that's government control. That's, that's not freedom. Right. It's, it's right. a nanny state. Okay. It's where government tells us, okay, well, you aren't capable of making these decisions for you, so we have to make them for you, okay? It's, it's like government's trying to act as our parent, and we are the child. Um, it's just like they're pretending that we're all two-year-olds, okay? Yeah, with two-year-olds, you have to treat them that way. But we are right. adults. We are some of the most innovative people in the world, okay? We've had more innovations from our short history than any other country in the world. And some of the innovations and some of the progress and stuff that has been pushed forward by the American people comes from our diversity. It comes from our freedom. It comes from our ability to be able to, to think outside of the box. Okay. And by adding these infringements on the second amendment, Pretty soon it's going to be, and they're already working on it. They're going to be adding stuff in to encroach upon the First Amendment. They're going to be adding stuff that encroaches on the Fourth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment, the Sixth Amendment, the Ninth Amendment, the Tenth Amendment. I keep going on. Okay. They add, keep adding because they claim, well, we're the only ones that know how you should be acting. We're the only ones that can be responsible for your actions. Okay, I'm sorry, it doesn't work that way. You were elected to represent us. 
you weren't elected to lord over us. And whenever you pass a restriction, whether it be on bump stocks or whether it be on the size of soda that I am allowed to purchase, you are trying to play lord over me. And that is not right. It is not what the Founding Fathers intended, and it is not what the American people want. Right. Yeah, it's, it's penalizing law-abiding citizens I mean, because we haven't done anything wrong, yet there's, being, there's restrictions being put on our, our Second Amendment rights. And then it just, it's a, it's a, it's, you said it uh, the other day in the chat, it's a slippery slope. Um, because once you feel it's palatable to, to, oh, we don't need bump stocks. And then the next thing is we don't need um, um, AR-15s. Uh, we don't need um, semi-automatic uh, handguns. Uh, we don't need, you know, just the list will go on and on and on until we're completely infringed. But you see how the, these laws are penalize people who haven't done anything wrong with that they, it's, um, it's, um, it's they're, they're guessing that you might do something wrong with this firearm. You know, how, you know, our system of justice is that you're innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. And our process says that we have a right uh, to have a hearing and, and to be, have notice of a hearing and also to be heard. Uh, but what a lot of these laws do is just simply bypass and, you know, there's no, crim there could be no criminal activity involved. The criminal activity is none. The criminal activity is that you own something that it, you, you're free to own. Right. You haven't right. hurt anybody with this firearm. You know, it just goes back to, you know, people, people kill people. Firearms don't kill people. Um, and it's that slippery slope of, well, we're going to do the bump stock. We're going to do... The next thing is something else. I wouldn't, if I was the NRA leadership, I wouldn't be willing and dealing with the gun banners because um, they, they really are far, far left. And I believe they really want the confiscation. They'll say, no, 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 we don't want to confiscate your guns. We just want common sense laws, common sense laws. These aren't common sense laws because there's zero, okay, zero, evidence to show that banning bump stocks is going to is going to prevent a violent cr crime or violent death or sh shootings now you can go all over youtube you can go countless other places and you can find ways to make any firearm fully automatic okay sure. so you wouldn't even need bump stocks at that point right right um, you can turn the AR-15 in automatic. You could, you, it actually, there's videos on there showing you how to make a MAC-10, 9mm submachine gun. Okay, right. fully automatic. Okay, -automatic? you will never stop the ability of the people to create a weapons system. You may sure. deny them the ability to legally own a weapon system, but you will never stop them from developing a weapon system that bypasses the laws that you put in place. And is there anything wrong with that? No, there isn't, okay? We are an innovative people. As human beings, we are innovators. We've been doing it since the beginning of history, okay? Yeah. We come up to against, against the challenge. We come up against an obstacle. We find a way to innovate around that obstacle. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter where it is in our history. We had obstacles of being able to travel long distances. So what we do? First, we domesticated horses. So we start riding horses and other animals. Then once we did that, then we started building wagons so we could start carrying more and more stuff with these horses. We started developing horse teams so we could get, okay? So all the way through our transportation history, we see these periods of innovation, okay? Where we went from just walking around on our own two feet to riding animals, to building carts, 
that attach to these animals so that we could carry more and more stuff all the way up to the locomotive systems to now we've got aircraft, we've got spacecraft, space vehicles, and so forth. We have innovated all the way along right. thus path. Okay, weapons are not, not going to be any different. They've, they, since the beginning of history, have continuously evolved. They have, through human innovation and human ingenuity, they have constantly changed. And there's always, even um, you know, with uh, danger, with da da well, yeah, dangerous um, items, um, whether it be like an 18-wheeler truck, you know, driving 80 miles an hour on the thruway. So, um, you know, it, it poses da da potential, pot potential dangers. So there's right. a lot of, there's always going to be, you know, a potential for danger. But the, what we don't want is that the government to determine uh, to determine that this that that potential behavior is something that they can legislate, right? So they can say, well, you have the potential of using the firearm in, in a nefarious way. You haven't used it in a nefarious way, but we want you to go ahead and turn in your bump stocks and then register them if you have, you know, uh, but or as you turn them in, we want you to go ahead and it would be a crime if you didn't. You see how that turns law-abiding citizens into, into criminals. Right, you're criminal. Um, and, and it also, that, that's how it encroaches on our freedom. You know, and it, it's, 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 it's not just really the freedom for the Second Amendment. It's, so, it's like so much more. Now, you never want the government to, um, uh, to compartmentalize your life, that they're, they're in control of your life. You, as an individual with, a free, with freedom, um, you, you, you have the freedom to also make mistakes. Right. You gotta, nobody's perfect, right? So there's got to be mistakes. There's going to be freak accidents. There's going to be things that go wrong. Uh, but it doesn't. So what do we do now? Well, we innovate. We, when people started getting into accidents and being you know, shoved out of their car for, for force of speed and, and cracking their head open, well, they started wearing seatbelts. Right, because ninety nine percent of the times, if you're wearing a seatbelt, you can you'll be saved. Your life will be saved in a car accident. Uh, so this is this is part of the ingenuity, Michael, that you and I are talking about, and that's that we are very creative. So none of us want kids, you know, toddlers, you know, um, um, none of us want them in a position where they're in a dangerous, uh, they're picking up firearms, things like that. We, we want safety precautions, in effect, and we do that ourselves as individuals, um, because we're responsible adults. I don't need the government to dictate to me um, how to be a responsible adult. I already, I, you know, I try my best, I've already do that, um, but you can't, like, penalize me in advance See, gun control laws penalize law-abiding citizens like Michael and I in advance of we didn't do anything wrong. And so you, the American people have to consider the idea that 300 million um, firearms or more um, are in, in America right now, 300 million. If it was the firearms that were causing the problem, you know, the, we would have so much devastation, right? So it's not the ingenuity of firearms that caused the mass murders. It, we have to dig deeper than that as a society, in my opinion, um, because it is scary. I'm a parent of school-aged children. Um, it is scary. Uh, sending them off to school nowadays, 2018, uh, when I know that there's a potential for a kid um, to, to bring, to, to commit a, some type of mass murder shooting, right? So there's a potential for that. that that's a very small potential. Uh, but it still concerns me. And I think as a society, we have to think about what is going wrong. What, you know, when I was a kid, uh, that, that didn't happen. Um, we, there wasn't, you know, there, there wasn't school shootings like that. However, there were ROTC, pro, ROTC programs, firearms, where kids had firearms in the South that I learned not from experience. Uh, kids down South, you know, drive their, high school students would drive their truck to school and they have their, their um, uh, firearm in the truck, you know, and it, it's not, it wasn't, it wasn't something uncommon, yet they, they didn't shoot up the school. You know, I would rather us as a society. We I don't we don't want that to happen. Nobody wants that to happen. Okay. Okay, I'm actually going to contradict you. I'm going to contradict you on a statement you just said. Okay, go ahead. 
Okay. Mass shootings have actually been a part of our history throughout history, uh, believe it or not. Okay. And the only thing that's really changed yeah. is the amount of notoriety that happens with these events. Okay. We have came, become and we are in an age of instant information. So when something yeah. happens, it is immediately spread throughout our civilization. Okay. All across the world. It is yeah. uh, it's almost instantaneous. Within minutes after the Mandalay Bay shooting started happening, it was all over the internet. Okay. Right. Within minutes of the Boston uh, bombings at the Boston Marathon, within minutes, uh, it was all over the internet. Okay. Before the news channels could even get to it, it was all over Twitter and spread just like wildfire. People overseas knew about it before the news channels started picking up on the stories of these events happening. So it hasn't been a change in the amount of occurrences. What has changed is our ability to be informed about the occurrences. That's what's changed. So as a result, from our perspective, it seems like we're having more and more of these events. When in truth, the events are actually staying pretty consistent, pretty level. I lost you for a second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, hopefully, or recorded. Um, but the events are staying level. And what's really happening is our ability to be informed of these events is what's increasing. It's not the number. Yes. Of it's the amount of information that we are receiving that's increasing. And there, and there is some truth into, uh, you know, that, that at least according to my research, uh, that that left-wing media uh, produce pretty faulty statistics uh, when it comes to covering, um, you know, guns in general um, in the news. And uh, Dr. Lott has covered this quite a bit um, about what he's talked about um, is that when you take a look at that data between, between, behind their statistics, uh, they really squeeze out, you know, all kinds of different variables that don't really fit the right model. So he said that what they really do is they come up with a conclusion and then they do whatever it takes to get to that conclusion. So that, that really creates a, um, it creates a big problem. So it's that, it's that misinformation, you know, that's out there about guns. Um, and uh, they, they spew it out there and, and, and the, the, the statistics that, that are unreal, unrealistic, um, and it's really unfair. So then it's, so people think, um, you know, the news is reporting the truth and uh, the, if, the, if they think that these firearms, you know, are so dangerous and deadly, you know, we don't need them and, and let's go ahead and support, you know, whatever it is. You know, it's, it's, like, it's like smoke and mirrors. They never have, they don't, they don't have the right data. They're not even spewing out, you know, uh, accurate information. It, they, they're, they're, and I have to believe it's on purpose, Michael. Right. It Why is. else? It is on purpose. Okay. And literally what they do is they come up with the political leaders, and I don't care which party you want to go with. Okay. Right. Uh, the political leaders of these parties decide and determine an agenda they are going to push. Okay, that agenda could be um, climate change, that agenda could be pollution, that agenda could be uh, mass transportation. It doesn't matter what the agenda is. So then what they will do is they will create, and using pseudoscience techniques, they will develop a conclusion and then they will find facts that support that conclusion. Now, mind you, I said facts because they are actual facts. But the problem is, is anything that doesn't fall into supporting that conclusion is disregarded. So they're not looking at all the science. They're looking at bits and pieces of the science in order to shape it to support their agenda. And this happens through every political party. 
And and you and I are guilty of it as well. Okay. We try not to be Hey. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> we we are biased. Just... Okay. As human beings, we are biased. Yes. And we, are. we will try to shape facts in order to support our conclusions. Okay. Absolutely. It's a natural Absolutely. part of being yeah. a human being. The problem is, is when you have a big group that is trying to do that and they're also silencing their critics, that's where we have a problem. And that's what's happening, currently happening in the media lots of times. Yes, I think so. And, you know, it really is, that's, that's what the heart of the First Amendment, me, uh, First Amendment means, uh, which is that right to free speech. So if you do have a, um, an opposing opinion, um, I'll hear it. You know, we're a democracy. You know, I don't mind hearing other people's views. Uh, what, what I do mind is when there's an orchestrated effort to skew those views, to, 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 to put out that false information. And I think particularly when it comes to this one issue on the Second Amendment, in the Democrat Party, you know, they, they've sort of... Um, and I know, you know, both parties, everybody does it, the partisan stuff, you know, everybody does it. But this whole Second Amendment, they, they do like jump on this one issue like they did with, with also illegal immigrants. And somehow they want, or abortion, they might do, you know. Uh, but, and somehow they use this one issue and they make it um, uh, paramount. And, and, they, and it whatever it takes, whatever it takes to convince the people to be on our side on this, make it really emotional, you know, let's not, provide re any real data or facts and if we do it's probably misinformation um let's push for this confiscation of guns i just want the american public you know the unassuming part you know the, the american people that hey i don't i live in the city i i'm not used to firearms i don't want to have one i'm in a safe neighborhood i have a doorman whatever the case is um that's okay you don't have to have a firearm. It's, it's just that you have to look at the rest of just the American, the culture and the history of the, re there's real good reasons for needing the second amendment. You know, it, it hasn't, it doesn't change over time. Uh, there's really good reasons to defend, be able to defend yourself, period. Like, an, right, as you said earlier, um, it's also defend yourself against the, con the criminal, the common criminal, and also defend yourself against the tyrannical government, which really is the important part. And even if you believe that, the, that we can't beat the government, go ahead. You can believe that. That's okay. Maybe we can't. Maybe we can. I don't know. But you take away the guns, <laughs> you take away a gun, we're done. You know, like, we <laughs> by freedom. You know, go move Go move to communist Cuba. I mean, they, they would allow you. Um, let me give you an example of a communist country uh, for the listeners. It, it's, it's, you're, you're in a country where you're not allowed to leave. Could you imagine? Do you know Cubans are not allowed? Because they're into communism. That's, what, that's why, you know, desperate um, families create boats out of trucks and, and try to, fly, you know, get to, my, to uh, Florida, to the U.S. coast. Um, for political asylum, why do they do that? They're not allowed to leave. But they can't. I think you come to America. Maybe I can get. I can apply for a citizenship. No, they can't leave the country. It's a communist country. Could you imagine living in a country where you can't leave? Look at the. Um, this is just to show you the contrast between freedom and not freedom. Right. Uh, look at what happened um, prior to Trump's talks with uh, Kim Jong Il. Or oh, I mean, um, in North Korea, okay. Right. Just prior to North Korea, somebody tried to defect, and they crossed the demilitarization zone between North and South Korea, uh, Korea. And as they were running through that zone, the South Koreans and the American military were trying to get them over to our side of the fence. Okay, because he's unarmed. Okay, he's fleeing a communist country. The North right. Koreans were trying to shoot and kill him right. because he was defecting from North Korea. The same thing happened with Russia. When Russia was on um, that way, okay, 
you weren't allowed, you had to go through so many processes in order to be able to just leave Russia that it was impossible for most people to be able to leave there. And if you did leave without going through all those processes, without having the correct paperwork, you were considered a criminal and you were subjected to uh, the death penalty for leaving that country. Okay, the same has happened um, with multiple other countries that have been under communism or socialistic type of control. Okay, because the only way that they can keep that type of control in action is by denying the people the freedoms that they deserve and the rights that they they um, inherently hold. And when you deny that and you force them into providing for the state, and that's what's happened in almost every country where um, socialism's happened, communism's happened, you get to a point where you have to force people because the people won't do it on their own because they look at their friends or they look at their neighbors and see that their neighbors are getting all these benefits, but they're not putting forth any effort. That's what we saw happen in Venezuela. That's what we're seeing happen in many of these other countries. Now, uh, <laughs> getting back on the subject of bump stocks and that type of stuff, <clears throat> when we allow our government to take to start infringing upon these various freedoms, including bump stocks. We are giving them the authority to rule over us. We're giving them the authority to take away our rights. And they continue to do this in a piecemeal fashion. Today it's bump stocks. Okay. They're also pushing legislation that is literally setting the stage for a future uh, similar to what we see in the movie Minority Report with precognition and precog crimes. Okay, so essentially what they're saying is, well, because you fall in this classification of people, you might commit a crime. Okay, and because you might commit a crime, and because you fit into this class of people, we are going to go ahead and today we're going to take something from you. Tomorrow, we're going to jail you. Okay, it's 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 that easy. That right. when we start down this road. So we're talking about going down the road of today, it's taking something away from you. Tomorrow, it's incarcerating you because you fall into a certain class of people. We've already gone through this in our history. Okay, look at what happened in World War II with the Japanese internment camps. Yeah, that's right. And we don't, we don't want, you know, that's, it's the beauty of, of our republic. Um, and it, it is that the, the, our, it's the individuals, it protects the minority, you know, it protects the minority from majority rule, but the minority has a voice. And, and even if that vision, um, our constitution protects that, um, I think our constitutional republic protects that, those individual rights. And that's why it's so important to be cognizant of those individual rights, which are really, I think, the heart of our of freedom. Uh, because without those individuals, it's, it's our own right to, to make mistakes and do things, um, you know, wrong or right, uh, bad or good, and I'm not saying illegal or criminal, uh, but, um, you know, life is, is, is ours to take, and it's not the, it, the government's um, place uh, to regulate our activities as long as we're not, you know, harming somebody else, uh, committing a crime, you know, stealing somebody else's property, you know, th that kind of thing. Um, I think we have, we have to, you know, to each his own. Other people's idea of what's 
good for them is their business. They can go and do it. I don't have a pro I don't want to take their rights away. So if a political opponent of mine wants to, you know, make an anti Second Amendment uh, position, I, I, I will be very, very glad to spend five minutes, 10 minutes debating that person. I think this way, you think that way, we will agree to disagree. I would never uh, want the government to tell that person that not that they don't have an opinion. Well, that their opinion doesn't matter. Let's and look at that's exactly what it does. Right. And the, 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 the majority, which is, you know, according to surveys, the, the majority of people support these bump stocks. Uh, they're going in blind, uh, bump stock bans. Uh, they're going in blind, going into this idea that somehow this accessory to a firearm should be considered uh, all of a sudden a machine gun. Um, you know, who gives the government that right to make that change, def you know, they, they'd like to change definitions of so, so how they get around things. Well, what gives the government the right to be able to deny us from owning machine guns? I know. Yeah, I agree too. The yeah, you, you, you know what? Deny I really that. like you. I really like you, Michael. I want to tell you why. Because you, um, you, you, you've changed me on some, a couple of things. Just our first interview. And, and you just, you're so smart. <laughs> I, mean, I love it. Um, and uh, because I, I go back and forth, you know, I, I change my opinion slightly on some of the little inner details, but you made a very good point on the last show that you were on in the crosshairs a month ago or so. Right. Um, and that was that, um, we can't, you know, we can't even take away rights. Why, who, who am I to say that this certain group of people don't have the right to defend themselves, to have a natural right? right. And that's exactly what we do with a lot of our laws that are already in existence. Well, if you look at, okay, to get back to some of what you were saying earlier, okay? If we get back to the basic laws, okay? Thou shall not kill. That thou shall not steal. Okay, those laws, right? Mm -hmm. Those laws are based upon somebody coming in and denying another person their right. Okay, that's what all the initial laws were designed for. We've transitioned right. away from that, and now we are developing laws that deny people their rights, which is criminal. Okay, criminality is when another person wishes and actively works to deny another individual their rights. Yeah. It is true. That makes a lot of sense. It is criminal because they deny you because this effort uh, to take away my right to defend myself, um, even incre incrementally, and, and all groups of people, and it's just you know it's an on it's an onslaught, it's an onslaught out there, and and it's it's all it's all set up to deny my rights, your rights, anybody's rights. Right. You know, just just to, to purchase and buy whatever it is that you want. You know, whatever product you know you want to. You know, it's it it it. it they, they want to get into um, into like free commerce. It, it, it takes away from, you know, your free commerce. It takes away from ingenuity. It takes away uh, from our right to defend ourselves. It takes our freedom away. And, and it's, you know, I agree with you. I really agree with you. Okay. I'm, I'm very good with legislation that prevents others from denying others their rights and denying them their liberties. Okay. I am not for wholesale legislation where we deny rights to anyone else. And that's what we saw. We've seen it in um, the civil rights movement in the 60s, okay, where a certain class of people were being denied, wholesale denied um, certain rights and liberties, okay, and we changed that. We grew as a country from that point. And we started, and we changed a lot of our system, a lot of our laws that then no longer allowed us to restrict those rights. Okay. 
Right. But why is our government so dead set on acting as criminals and denying the American people their rights, rights that they were born with, rights that have been around since the beginning of time and throughout the history of mankind? Okay, the only time anybody's ever lost those rights are when another individual denied them of those rights. Okay, whether it be a king, a ruler, or a government. And whenever a government acts that way, they are acting in a criminal manner. If we take and look at a criminal, a criminal is somebody that wants to deny you of your life, your liberty, or your property. Okay? That's what criminals right. do. Right. Okay. So. I think, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, I think the American people are smart enough, you know, out there and, and say, you know, say, well, I don't know, if the, you know, wh how much, what's partisan, what's not, you know, generally speaking, the public is, um, they do not trust the media as it is now, and and, and the and the internet and, and all and the global information going on um, in real time, um, you know, does also benefit us. So I do think that there's hope uh, that we can overcome this um, unnatural, you know, wanting to take away rights. Criminal taking away right criminally is a criminal act. To take away people's rights. It is. <laughs> and it's in its genuine meaning. So it's a criminal act. And I think the American people can see that. We'll, we'll get to that point. I don't know that we're there now, uh, but I think we can get to that point. And I think we can start by NRA. Don't wheel and deal. <laughs> don't, we, we have to stay firm. Got to stay firm. Okay. We don't want to wheel and deal. We want to overcome this of, the, of this criminal behavior because it's criminal behavior to take away my rights. Um, we are coming down to the end of the show, uh, Michael. Uh, so I want you to have the uh, last word. Uh, I don't want everybody to wholeheartedly and wholesalely go after the NRA at, because they have done a lot of work um, in promoting gun rights. Absolutely. Okay, And they play a political game. I say that in a nice way. Mm -hmm. they, play, <laughs> they play it. And I don't deny that, okay, because I, I do support the NRA. I do think they've done a lot of good for gun owners. I do regret the fact that they do give ground in a lot of areas instead of standing ground. Um, another note that I want everybody to understand is throughout our history, we've shown that many times the majority has been wrong. And just because the majority supports a certain position does not mean that it is the right position to be in. That's absolutely correct. Right. And good thing, you know, our country that we don't, we, we don't, we're not communists. Uh, so we don't, we don't prison, we're not supposed to uh, prison our political dissidents. So, right. you know, it is okay to have disagreement, you know, uh, with, with the government. And that's a natural right with your government, with the people controlling you, people around you. It, you can have a dis. You can disagree. Uh, you can seek change. Uh, just don't seek the type of change that would violate my rights. Right. Exactly. It's been like this. This program. So, where can people find you, Michael? Okay, you can get a hold of me through my website, um, which is at l1f.us, or you can email me directly at michael at l1f.us. Or you can um, find me on Facebook through the Liberty First Foundation um, page or the Religion of Arms Facebook group. Religion of Arms is the Facebook group name, right? Yes. Fantastic. Fantastic information at the website. Definitely recommend it uh, to all the viewers. Uh, it's been a fascinating show. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Michael Marshall. You've been a great guest. I think it's a great topic. And... Um, I hope to see you another another time. You'll have uh, to come back again. Back, just let me know. All righty. God bless you. And go, you know, this is this is a tradition. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>